In today's video, we're going to be ranking good self-improvement habits. These are the good self-improvement habits that I think people should start doing. These are things I have somewhat, somewhat of an experience with doing. I'm not going to rank something that I've never done. These are things I have done from personal experience, and I'm going to be ranking self-improvement habits. We have reading. Reading. Well, despite what I say about reading being, like, bad, you don't... I say you only learn from, like, personal experience and, like, pain and doing things in the real world. Reading, the downside to reading is that people don't go out and use the information. They read a book and they feel like they accomplished something without actually having to use the information. They... You get more pleasure getting advice than you do from acting on it. So, that's the downfall to reading books. But, it is a good source, a good way to get information. It's, um, it helps you expand your knowledge. And it contributes to you becoming a more articulate person. A well-read person. It's a good way to get knowledge. But, you have to become somebody who is using the knowledge. Or else... It, it's not gonna work out. I feel like reading's essential, but Andrew Tate ap apparently has only read like two books or something. I don't understand. He's like super smart, but he's never read like anything. Reading's essential. I mean, like, how are you gonna get your knowledge? Okay, next one, a little less important, but still kind of important is meditation. What, what I personally know from meditation is it helps you to become more centered, more like concentrated, to have a better focus. If you were to say like the most important skill you need for life, like a great determiner of your success is your ability to focus on something. Like focus, get work done, and resist the urge to get distracted from what you really want to do. Meditation is super essential. It's going to help you if you're one of these people who has, like, TikTok brain and you're addicted to staring at your phone, scrolling, like, uh, freaking addicted to Instagram reels, TikToks, and YouTube shorts. You're that person. Then meditation is going to help you. It's going to get you used to not always being stimulated. It's going to help with your attention span. I feel like... I'm rating it a B because I haven't actually really done it that much recently and I haven't seen much of a change, but it can help people if you're these TikTok brain individuals. I'm not saying you particularly, there's people out there, you know if you're one. Not necessarily to call you guys out and say like you're wrong or like shame you, but it's just, <laughs> it's just something to look into. Next one. I'm going to say it's an S. <laughs> this one is working out. This is getting exercise. It's essential for life. If you want to live past like 30, you're going to have to start doing exercise. Your body is meant to move. If you don't use your body for movement, then it doesn't work. You need, and believe it or not, you need your body to live. So you need to train your body. You need to start training, doing hard. You need to be in good physical shape. People will respect you more if you are a person obviously more fit. It shows you have discipline. It's your body tells a story, I guess. Like, you see somebody with super big traps, large chest, super jacked person, you're gonna, it tells you a lot about them. It tells you what they do. It tells you how disciplined they are, how committed they are, and you trust them more. It's like, what, what can somebody judge from you without you having to say anything? They look at your body and they can tell you're a disciplined person from it. It has social benefits, health benefits. Literally everything in your life is going to be benefited. Your relationships, your money, your health. Everything is benefited from you exercising. Make sure to implement it. Next one, ice baths. Ice baths aren't completely essential. I, I've been doing them lately. Yeah, they help with you, help with muscles, help relieve like pain. Maybe you have joint pain or something. I think ice baths help. They help increase your mood. I feel like they're around the same level as meditation. It's not completely essential, but it helps somewhat. It's an all right habit. I, I do ice baths every day, so I'm not gonna, I can't trash, I can't talk trash on it. I made 
uh, maybe I can link some videos to my ice bath advice that I've posted. Uh, next one we are going to have is making your bed. So I think making your bed is absolutely essential. It's the making your bed is the first step in becoming a disciplined person. If when you think of discipline, discipline is you not wanting to do something, but just doing it anyways because you know that it's going to benefit you. Discipline is an absolutely essential skill. That's the main that's like the only benefit of making your bed. What making your bed does, it starts up your discipline. You get a task done. And even if you have the worst day, at least you can come home to a well-made bed. Even if you that was your worst day, at least you accomplish making your bed. You accomplish one task, and that propels you to completing more tasks. It triggers the winner effect. You One small win will contribute to you creating more wins. Okay, this one, also essential. This one is getting sunlight in your eyes, like first thing in the morning. First thing you when you wake up, first thing when you wake up, you want to get sunlight in your eyes because it's going to kickstart your waking up of your brain. It, there's a chemical release when you get sunlight in your eyes first thing in the morning that helps wake you up naturally and sets your melatonin levels for the night when you go to sleep. It's an excellent way to wake up. Andrew Huberman talks about this a lot. And you'll hear him, he talks about, like, first thing in the morning, he goes for a 10-minute walk, just whatever he does, to get, his goal is to get sunlight in his eyes first thing in the morning. If you're somebody like me, and you don't have sunlight when you first wake up, I wake up at, like, 6 o'clock, and there's no sunlight, what I will do is I have this lights up here. Right here, I have, like, some studio light, and I'll get bright-ass light in my eyes. I can just sit here and I'll have some stuff on my phone I have to do. But mewing, <laughs> mewing is like, I don't know, I feel like it's useless. <laughs> You're gonna have to hold your tongue in that posture forever. I'm like, I haven't tried mewing. It's, I think it's uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't even know how to mew. And I don't even know if it benefits you. The <laughs> mewing, mewing is a joke. Mewing, you see memes of mewing. I'm pretty, fuck. <laughs> no, mewing is a D tier. Mewing is fake. I do not believe in mewing. If I have to, I never knew about mewing and I still have a good jaw. <laughs> mewing is fake. If you want a good jawline, lose fat around your jaw and become a nose breather, I guess. Cause I think when you're, when you're a mouth breather, you're, you get a receding jawline. When you're a mouth breather, your jawline recedes so start training yourself to breathe through your nose if you want a better jawline tape your mouth at night and it's going to force you to breathe through your nose like i'll show you this right now at my bedside table i have this it's called micro pore tape you just put it around your mouth and it's gonna kind of force you to breathe through your nose at night so if you had to breathe at night you can just it's not gonna like force you you're not gonna like suffocate a little piece of tape gonna help you train yourself to breathe through your nose but mewing is a fucking d tier fuck mewing <laughs> mewing's a meme this one is eating healthy is that eating healthy it's a food pyramid obviously essential just like sleep just like working out everything you want good in your life you're going to get it through eating healthy it's going to help you with your money help you with your relationships make you look better help you with your health literally everything is going to be benefited from you choosing to eat healthier and i just just don't understand people who deliberately like eat like shit have like soda and chips and stuff they complain they act all like stoic and stuff acting super tough but then when it comes to little things they don't concentrate on the little things like eating healthy your body is like a machine and if you're just gonna put shit in it and expect it to run normal like nah if you can't can the first step in improving yourself is controlling what you put in your mouth because if you can't even control what food you choose to put in your mouth and to consume then how are you expected to control anything else in your life the first step is i'd say eating healthy if you can't do that you have a big problem this one is eating the frog eating the frog is essential but not as essential it's like kind of less essential 
eating the frog. So yeah, A tier. Eating the frog is getting your hardest task done first. So everything else is down downward. I made a video on eating the frog. But eating the frog, get your hardest task done like first thing in the morning. So it delays your procrastination. You're going you're going to get it done when you have no excuse to procrastinate. And then your life is going to then your rest of your days are going to be a breeze. You're going to be completing tasks, but they're not going to be as hard as eating the frog. You have the satisfaction of knowing you completed your hardest task and the rest of your day can just go down breezily. A eating the frog in A tier. Next one is doing hard shit. Like doing difficult things, deliberately challenging yourself. Also essential. Do hard shit, guys. I cannot stress this enough. Everything you want in life comes from deliberately putting yourself, inflicting pain and trauma on yourself. Because that's what's going to make you a better person. We learn through experiencing pain. Putting ourselves in uncomfortable situations is how we learn as human beings. And if you can learn to run towards the pain, chase the pain, embrace the pain, you will become a better person. So do hard shit, stay hard. And this is essential. Okay. Next one, intermittent fasting. This goes along with eating the frog. Not completely essential. Not a completely essential habit, but also very good habit. A tier. E, so what intermittent fasting is, is that you wait till like 12 o'clock or so till you start eating you don't eat in the morning you know like breakfast breakfast is like you breaking your fast you're not gonna break your fast in the morning and have breakfast you're gonna break your fast like way later like you can even skip lunch and only eat dinner i feel like that's what some people do but for just for starting you skip breakfast and you only eat lunch which is at like 12 o'clock Intermittent fasting, the way intermittent fasting functions, it goes around the biology, the biohacking idea that your body performs at its peak. It performs at its best when you are hungry. Your, your body is designed to function at its best when you are hungry. And consuming food, it requires your body, it takes energy from your body to consume and digest food and instead you use that stuff for working hard you put that energy towards something else and eating just helps you perform better that's the benefit of intermittent fasting and now the next one is cold showers going along with i don't think cold showers are as good as ice baths I don't know, I feel like some of my friends might be doing cold showers, which is a start, it's good, but I don't like cold showers, <laughs> it's hard shit, but there's like minimal benefits, maybe, maybe there's just, the only benefit's mental, I feel like it's not a complete fad, like mewing, but I don't like cold showers, no, I don't, like cold showers in the way that I don't like doing them they suck yeah but I don't think they're helpful <laughs> and yeah someone's gonna ask me yeah back it up back up your reasoning why do you not like cold showers you're just showering in the morning when you take a shower in the morning next one socializing absolutely essential humans are social creatures if you do not socialize, you're going to be a very sad person. If you look at people who are like depressed and stuff, they choose to be alone and not socialize. If you want to be a happy person, you want to socialize with people. Quality social connection will keep you performing your best. It's absolutely essential. Next one's coffee. The way normally the way people consume coffee is that they drink it first thing in the morning to get the boost of energy because it's hard for people to get out of bed and then just get straight to work. And that's where coffee comes into play. But when people do this, they crash later in the day because their body's not naturally waked up. They're relying on the coffee. So when they no longer have it, their body goes like below baseline. 
people essentially are drinking coffee to feel normal. What I recommend doing is delaying your caffeine intake till like two hours after waking up. And it's going to, your body's going to have to naturally wake up using its chemicals and sunlight. Your body's going to have to naturally wake up instead of relying on coffee. And then you drink the coffee just to go get the extra boost of energy. And it will prevent you from crashing later in the day. Now, what's this one? Getting up early. I don't think it matters what time you get up. If you look at, I've looked at successful people, everyone people are looking up to these days. And you would think these people are waking up at like four o'clock or something, super productive, going on runs at four o'clock. But really, a lot of them don't need that. They, it's a waste of time. They, what they do, they wake up at normally like seven and eight o'clock some even like nine so i don't think it's completely essential to wake up early the world pressures you the world benefits you to wake up early if you're someone who's an early riser because you know school starts early you're still gonna get the same hours in the day the same work done the only difference is what time other people are waking up compared to you that's what makes waking up early so different and somewhat beneficial but it's not completely essential. Next one's journaling. I remember doing a journal back, I made a video on journaling actually. And was journaling helpful for me? It helped me put some of my thoughts on paper. It helped me reflect on them. I thought it was okay. I think it's a C tier. How would I explain what I, how I use affirmations? I don't even know if this is how you use them. Can I put it back? Okay. No, I cannot put it back. The way I use affirmations is that I have this list. I can actually pull that up on my phone. I have this thing. It's like mindset for success. And it's the three, like, it's basically the elements of the G mindset. Everyone's, but my, the way I use affirmations is I have like these rules and I'll read them when I wake up just to remind myself of like the mindset I want to have. Thank you for watching my video on me ranking self-improvement habits it's been an honor to share my opinion and what i think of these habits and for you can make the appropriate changes to your own habits thank you for watching and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video